Welcome our video friends. Appreciate you joining with us today. Uh, a beautiful day, kind of cloudy and overcast here in South Carolina, but a beautiful, beautiful day. And we're at a very beautiful place this morning. I hope that you can get a glimpse of the beauty of the spring and the leaves that are now look like fully out just about here in these mountains. Uh, it is a beautiful place to be at. You can hear, I don't know if you can hear the little creek running from here or not, but it's, uh, it is a, a very beautiful place to be at. And I am thankful. Chilly this morning. My wife has built us a small fire here at this little stop. And it's been a blessing to us. You might be able to see some of the smoke perhaps from it. But uh, we do appreciate this spot and others like it as well. And, uh, and let me in encourage you uh, to share these videos if you like them. You think they're worthwhile uh, with others. And I go verse by verse through the Bible. And uh, if you're doing a study, per se, of the book of John, you'll find that I go through the book of John verse by verse. I and uh, I deal with the hard verses as well as the simple verses. I try not to dodge any of them. I, 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 I hit them head on. Now, I realize there are many others who may have other interpretations of some of these verses, uh, even Bible believers. Uh, and so... but that's okay uh you know we we sometimes do have different points of views about certain scriptures and exactly what it means uh but uh nonetheless if you're in the book you're in the right book i can certainly say that well my dear friends let's uh get right on into the scriptures this morning and uh verse 48 jesus is in the temple and he's been talking and giving uh answers to the jewish people who came with him with very, very hard questions and very, very um, uh, uh, challenging words. And they even called him all kinds of things as they did this. Let's read in verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said to him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? I mean, look, right, look at what they had to say to him. There, there is no, not one shred of evidence, period, ever presented from the life of Jesus to warrant such a such a statement from them. They said, you're a Samaritan and you have a devil. Don't we speak well? How crazy could that be? And uh, yes, he was called a Samaritan, uh, but, uh, but that was also, to them, that was a demeaning name to call him because they had no dealings with the Samaritans. Actually, he was a full-blooded Jew. Is what Jesus Christ was, a full-blooded Jew. Uh, he was not, actually not a true Samaritan. The Samaritans are referring to him, the mixed race, and the mixed Jewish race had mixed in uh, with the other nations around there who were left there uh, from the, uh, the dispersion at, uh, of the northern and the southern kingdoms. Uh, there were some people who were left there in the northern kingdom, and they intermarried with other nations. And therefore the Jews felt that they were unclean and uh, that they just didn't rank up to them at all. Yes, it was a very racial statement that these Jews made, uh, speaking demeaning things, purposely demeaning, and calling Jesus Christ a Samaritan who had a devil. And that's what they had to say about him. And uh, Jesus answered and said, and, and like I said, there was not one shred of evidence in any of the life or teaching of Jesus Christ to merit any such answer as this, to say you have a devil. Uh, we read in the Bible about those who are possessed with devils, and there are certain traits and signs that follow that uh, of people who have a devil. Uh, but right here, they accuse Christ of having a devil. And Jesus, in verse 49, answers and says, I have not a devil, but I honor my Father, and you do dishonor me. So rightly said that they dishonored him. These Jews dishonored Jesus Christ. Uh, they dishonored him by calling him a Samaritan. Now, to them, that was a low punch. To Jesus Christ, he had just got through back in John chapter 4 of uh, going by the well, Jacob's well, and winning the Samaritan woman, and she won much of her town to faith in Jesus Christ. So I don't know that Jesus thought that was uh, 
uh, such a terrible thing to be called that, but he knew what they meant when they called him that. They meant it to be a bad thing. Uh, I don't think he necessarily uh, took that to be uh, as they meant for it to be, but he understood what they meant. And so therefore, uh, he said to them, he said, but I honor my father and you do dishonor me. Uh, he said, I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Had Jesus been seeking his own glory, he would never have went to the cross. Uh, I mean, that uh, the death of the cross was the most horrible way you could imagine to die. And so uh, he didn't seek to glorify himself. Had he wanted to glorify himself, why, well, he'd have been born in the palatial palace. He'd have been wrapped in the finest linen, had been fed with golden spoons, and had the most prominent uh, uh, things around him and people around him that you could ever imagine. I mean, he had wealth untold. And, uh, and he, so you could not say that he came to glorify himself. He did not. He came to walk and live in this earth. And then he came to die upon the cross and give himself for our sins. He didn't come to get glory to himself at that time. And so uh, just remember that, my friends. Jesus didn't come for his own glory. But he, he laid aside his glory to pick up the cross of Calvary. Now let's read on. Verily, verily, I say unto you, truly, truly, if a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. What about that? Again, he reinstates to them in a little bit different words than he'd said before. He said, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. He had just got through telling them that if you'll believe on me, or if you do not believe upon me, you shall die in your sins. And right here he reemphasizes, if a man will keep my sayings, that is, if you'll believe upon me, you shall never see death. Now that is a great promise, and I'm so thankful for that promise right there. That if you shall keep his sayings, you shall never see death. And uh, uh, they asked Jesus, what work may we do? And he says, the only thing you can do is to believe upon him who sent me. And, and to believe and to have faith. That's the only thing that a man can do. And saving faith, may I add to that, is God given according to Ephesians chapter 2. Yes, we believe that the saving faith, that part of our faith, which is from the heart, comes as a gift from God. And there right here he says, if you keep my sayings, you shall never see death. Now notice on right here about the answer and the follow-up question that the Jews give to this. I mean, if you have been with me down through this discourse after, after, after the feast, uh, you'll see that Jesus gives some great statements to them, and then they come back picking apart that and ask him further. So you can see this just keeps on breaking down with their questions about every word that he said. They'd find something to say and to, uh, to come back. But they could not answer nor deny that which he said. And we're going to see the conclusion of this uh, discourse after the feast right here in just a few verses. And, uh, and they answered this. And they pick, they picking at his words trying to uh, catch him his words. They never did it. Never did. It wouldn't take them long to have me all fouled up and be saying, well, I can't answer that. Uh, Jesus always had an answer. Always. And the answers that he gave them were literally out of this world. Literally out of this world. Because he was not of this world. Let's read on verse 52. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. They said, we know it now. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my sins, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, who is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? What about that? Here are these Jews go again. They said, now we know you've got a devil. They said, Abraham is dead, the prophets are dead. And you say, if a man keep my sins. In other words, they're saying, why, you can't ignore, ignore Abraham what he taught us and you can't ignore the prophets he didn't uh, he was greater than all of them 
He never ignored them. He never laid aside their sayings or the teachings. Matter of fact, we just read where he had emphasized the words of Abraham and Abraham's faith and who Abraham believed in. And here they come back uh, with, with blinded answers, blinded answers and more blinded questions, more questions of depravity, uh, more darkness of their own mind because they just can't get it and they don't get it. And they never did. Many of these didn't. <clears throat> and let's read on about the answer that Jesus Christ gives them. Jesus answered in verse 54, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, if whom, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say that I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his sins. And uh, he just point blank tells them, you're a liar. He said, if I was to agree with you, I would be a liar. And uh, he is, he's given them about a fourfold answer to another one of their statements in, this, in these passages right here. And you can count up the, the uh, degrees in which he gave them these answers. It's a fourfold answer he gives to the question again. And uh, he, he actually straightens them out in a great and a mighty way about the matters. And... Uh, and yet they deny, and yet they gangsay, and yet they say contrary to that. Let's read on right here. He said, I should be like unto you, but I know him and keep his sayings. Who else could say that beside God the Son? Verse 56, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. What a statement to make. He said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. And, uh, I mean, he, he put, puts it put to them guys just point blank about how he had saw uh, and had seen their day and, uh, and was glad. As I said in an earlier lecture, I believe that when Abraham took Isaac up on the mount to offer his son, I think he saw his day fully then and was glad and rejoiced in it he was about to offer his own son of whom he had already said that he had faith to believe that God would raise him up from the dead should the need be and Abraham walked up that mountain with his son in the wood and said in answer to Isaac's question God shall provide himself a lamb for a sacrifice provide himself a lamb not for himself, but himself. He saw his day and was glad. And when you can see that, that God Almighty has died for your sins and provide himself a lamb in the person of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, when you can see that, when you can see that, my friends, you'll rejoice and be glad too. Instead of yourself being offered for eternally in the flames of hell for your sins, and you can see that Christ died in your stead upon the cross. That will be a glad day. That was the day when I saw it that I've never forgotten. That happened in August of 1976. And I went up to pray in the altar in the church. And the pastor said, pray. I got down, didn't know how to pray. Didn't know what to pray. And we went through that a couple of times. And I just wasn't getting it. And I wasn't going to just be stuck on the church roll so hey, we got a new convert if I didn't understand it. And if there wasn't nothing to it, I didn't want it. Now, if this is real, I want it. If it's not real, I don't want it. And so the pastor said, it's not by feelings. And he'd ask me, do you feel, do you feel you're saved now? I said, I don't feel any different than when I came up here. I bet that's probably the first and only time he'd ever had anybody tell him that. But I wasn't going to be snuffed by some would-be preacher, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, the third time, he says, it's by believing upon Jesus Christ. And the third time when I prayed, the light came on. The Lord God gave me saving faith at that moment. And I saw that Jesus Christ had died for my sins. Not only for mine, but the sins of the whole world. That he was God's payment for sin. I couldn't have told you a nickel's worth of theology at that moment. But when I saw it, I saw it. And I believe it to this very day. That's been 40, almost 46 years ago. 
And uh, I'm like Abraham. I saw his day, and I rejoiced therein. And well, my dear friends, I hope you have seen his day too, and that you too believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Sure.